Hello and welcome. My name is Richard Hicks, and I'm the founder and principal consultant here at Richard M. Hicks Consulting. We provide consulting services for secure remote access and enterprise PKI projects for organizations worldwide. In this video, I'll demonstrate how to configure Transport Layer Security, or TLS, for Microsoft SQL Server 2022. There are many good reasons to use TLS for SQL Server communication. Using TLS has many important security benefits. For example, when a TLS certificate is installed on the SQL Server, this ensures that our clients are connecting to valid, trusted, authorized SQL servers. It also helps prevent adversary in the middle attacks. Of course, databases often contain sensitive or proprietary information, it's a lot of information that we don't want to be disclosed, things like the personal information for our employees or customers, corporate financial records, or other proprietary business information. And of course, many organizations have regulatory and compliance standards that they have to adhere to, and most of these universally require encrypted data not only at rest, but in transit as well. And finally, of course, using cryptography whenever possible is always a good idea. It's a minimum recommended security best practice. When SQL Server 2022 is first installed, it generates a self-signed certificate by default. Self-signed certificates provide little value because they're not issued by a trusted certification authority, or CA, which makes it impossible to verify the authenticity of the server. A better option is to use a managed TLS certificate. So, we need a TLS certificate, and of course that has a couple of different requirements. First of all, where do we get this TLS certificate? Well, I recommend using Microsoft Active Directory Certificate Services. This is probably already in place in your enterprise, and this is a good place to start. However, in addition to that, you could optionally use a public CA, something like a DigiCert, Sectigo, Let's Encrypt, anything like that. Ultimately, the certificate is functionally the same, but when you're using ADCS, you have a little bit more control over the management and issuance of that certificate. We also need to define our encryption flags on the SQL Server. You have two choices here. You can use force encryption or force strict encryption, and they sound very similar, but they have some crucial differences. So when we're looking at these encryption flags in SQL Server 2022, the first setting sounds good, force encryption. However, this is actually a pretty poorly named setting. It actually uh, does allow unencrypted sessions under certain circumstances. Really, this should be called prefer encryption, but it also means that it will support unencrypted connections, again, under certain circumstances. A better solution is to use force strict encryption, which actually requires that all communication between the SQL Server and the client is encrypted, and any connections that do not support encryption will be terminated. So the recommendation here, of course, is to use forced strict encryption whenever possible, but I understand there are going to be scenarios in which you have legacy clients and perhaps uh, older drivers out there that don't support TLS encryption, and so you may need to use just the regular force encryption to support backwards compatibility. So let's get to the demonstration. I'm going to show you how to configure TLS on a SQL Server 2022 server. Before we get started, I want to show you what this self-signed TLS certificate looks like. Now, the best way to look at this is with a tool called Nmap, and so you can download this tool on the internet and run some commands to actually retrieve the certificate from the service. So the command I'm going to run here is nmap.exe-n, because I don't want to perform name resolution, and then dash p1433, because that's the port that the service is running on, and then the name of the server. Then I'm going to add the parameter dash dash script, and then I'm going to specify the SSL dash cert script. This is a script that's installed when you install Nmap, and it performs some advanced capabilities like this. And here you can see that we have a certificate installed on the service, and this is a default installation of SQL Server 2022. And a couple of things that you'll notice here is that the subject name, of course, is SSL signed, self signed fallback. So unless your server happens to be called that name, you're going to get a subject name mismatch when you connect to the service. And of course, the way around that is to trust the certificate, but ultimately that's a bad idea from a security perspective. The other thing to realize is that this certificate has an exceedingly long validity period. This certificate is good for 30 years, so in the event of a key compromise, an attacker would have access to any data encrypted with this certificate for quite some time. So this is really, really bad from a security perspective. So we want to deploy our certificate using ADCS. The first thing that we need to do is create a certificate template. 
Now, when I create this certificate template, I'm going to follow standard best practices for this. And so I'm going to describe all of these settings as we walk through that. So here we are on our issuing CA. This is our ADCS server. To start, we need to get to our certificate templates in Active Directory. These are the certificate templates that are published on the server, of course. And to do that, I'm going to right-click Templates, and I'm going to choose Manage. And this opens the Certificate Templates Management Console. Now, a best practice is whenever you need a certificate template is to duplicate a default template and make changes to it. So I'm going to find the Web Server Certificate. I'm going to right-click and choose Duplicate Template. Here I'm going to uncheck Show Resulting Changes because I want to avoid some of the noise that that produces. But I'm going to choose the latest version that is supported by my CA. So I'm running all on Server 2025 now. So I'm going to choose 2016. And then the certificate recipient, of course, is a Server 2025 box as well. So I'm going to choose Windows 10, Windows Server 2016. I'm going to go to the General tab, and I'm going to give this a descriptive name. And I'm going to set the validity period to one year. Let's go to the Cryptography tab. Here I'm going to choose Key Storage Provider from the Provider Category drop-down list. RSA is uh, the algorithm that we're going to use, and the key size is 2048-bit. You should not use anything less than 2048-bit. You certainly can go more, but I think 2048-bit should be sufficient. We'll select SHA-256 for the request hash. Now we'll go to the subject name field. We want to make sure that it says supply in the request. We're going to go to our extensions tab, and we want to ensure that the only extension available here is server authentication. It does not need any other application policies to be assigned to it. Now we'll go to our issuance requirements tab, and since we have the subject name supplied in the request, the best practice dictates that this should require CA manager approval. We don't want to automatically issue a certificate for which the requester can supply the subject name because that would obviously be bad from a security perspective. So we're going to select CA Manager Approval. Then I'm going to go to the Security tab. And here I want to add either the group that my SQL Server belongs to or the SQL Server itself. So if you have many SQL Servers, this is probably a security group. But if you just have one or two servers, you can certainly just add the principles here directly. So I'm going to click Add. And now I want to grant this read and enroll permissions. I also want to ensure that no other principals have the ability to enroll for this template. So I'm going to find out if anybody else has that permission and remove that. So domain admins and enterprise have that. We don't need that, so I'm going to remove that. So the only principal that has enroll permission on this template is the SQL Server itself or the SQL Server group. So once that's done, click OK. We can close this console, and now I can go back here, just choose New Certificate Template to Issue. And you might find that the certificate does not show up immediately here. Don't worry, this is due to replication delays. So it should show up there in just a, a second. My lab is pretty small, so it should show up here rather quickly. And there it is. So we'll click OK. So the certificate template has been published, and now we're ready to move to the SQL Server and actually enroll for the certificate. So here we are on our SQL Server, and we need to enroll for this certificate. So I'm going to open up the local computer certificate store, and for that I'm just going to use certlm.msc. I'm going to navigate to the Personal Certificates Store. I'm just going to right-click here in the blank space, choose All Tasks, and Request New Certificate. I'm going to choose Next. I'll choose Next once more. And now I'm going to select Lab SQL Server, and you'll see here's a link that says More Information is Required. That's because we have to supply our subject name in the request. So I'm going to click on this link. And here, in the Subject Name section, in the Type drop-down list, I'm going to select Common Name. And I'm going to enter the fully qualified domain name of the server. I'm 
I'm going to copy that and put it on my clipboard because I'm going to need it again here shortly. So I'm going to click Add. And then in the Alternative Name field, I want to select DNS and just paste the FQDN again. Also, and this is optional, but probably a good idea, I like to add the single label host name of the server whenever possible because that allows clients to be able to connect using the short name. So in other words, instead of having to put in the full FQDN, they can just put in the short name and they won't get a subject name mismatch of the certificate will still work. So once that's done, click OK and then click Enroll. You'll see that the enrollment status is pending. That's because the certificate was not issued automatically, so we have to go over to the CA and have that certificate issued. So here we are on our issuing CA again. I'm going to open the Certification Authority Management Console, and I'm going to go to Pending Certificate Requests, and I'm going to issue this certificate. Now, if you're following along at home, um, this is not a security best practice. I enrolled for the certificate. I should not have the permission to issue it or validate and issue it as well. Typically, in a production environment, this would be dedicated to two separate roles. So this is uh, definitely a violation of security best practices, but this is my test lab, and this is for demonstration. So anyway, understand that I do know that this is a bad security practice, but it is what it is. So I'm going to look at the certificate. And by the way, if you want to look at the properties of that, you can actually choose view, uh, all tasks, view, uh, attributes, and extensions. And so if you're, uh, if you're responsible for approving this certificate in a production environment, this is where you would look at the information that was supplied in the request. And if somebody's put some bogus information in here, we would see that and be able to, to deny the request. But if everything looks good, we're going to go ahead and issue it. Before I issue this certificate, you need to take note of the request ID because we're going to need that when we retrieve the certificate on the SQL Server. So this is request ID 369. So I'm just going to right-click and choose All Tasks issue. Now I can go back to the SQL Server and retrieve this certificate and install it. So we're back on our SQL Server where the certificate has been issued so now we can retrieve it and we have to do that at the command line. So you can do a you can open up an elevated uh, command window or PowerShell window. I prefer PowerShell. And we're going to issue the command certrec.exe-retrieve and then the ID of that request. So once you run that command, it's going to prompt you uh, with a list of CAs in your environment, and you need to select the one that it was issued on. So whenever you went over to see uh, to approve the request, you would know which server this would belongs to. So we're going to select our CA3 in this environment, so we'll choose OK. It's been issued, and so now I need to save this to a location, so I'm just going to save it to the desktop, and we'll just call it SQL1. So now at this point, the certificate has been saved, but it's not been imported into the store, so we need to do that. And the command to do that is certrec-accept, and then the name of the file. And there you have it. That certificate should now be in the store. So if I go back into the UI and I just refresh here, you'll see my SQL Server certificate is now in the store, issued from my lab SQL Server template that I just created. Now the next thing that we have to do is grant permission to the SQL Service to the certificate's private key. And to do that, we're going to right-click on the certificate that we just enrolled, choose All Tasks, and Manage Private Keys. And here what we need to do is click Add and we're going to add our SQL Server service account. So if you're using a domain account, like a domain user service account, or you're using a group managed service account, you would enter that here. Now, if you're just using the default SQL service, it's a little bit different. For that, you have to go to Locations, select SQL Server, you're the root here, your SQL Server, and click OK. And then put in the value NT service slash MS SQL Server using this exact syntax.
click check names, click OK, it should be good to go. Now, this service only needs read for the private key. It does not need full control over it. So make sure that when you select this, that it has only the read permission. Once you're done, go ahead and click OK. So now we want to configure TLS for SQL Server, and to do that we need to open the SQL Server Configuration Manager. You can find that in the taskbar. I have also pinned it to the taskbar here, so I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And Next I want to expand SQL Server Network Configuration and then right-click Protocols for Microsoft SQL Server and choose Properties. And here's my encryption flags, but I'm not going to set those yet. I want to actually enable the certificate first. And so here, if you look at this drop-down list, my SQL Server certificate now appears in this list. If you receive the certificate from somebody else, if you got it from a public CA, you could just import it here if you wanted, or you can do it uh, using the certificate store directly, either way. But as long as that certificate's in the store and has a private key, it should be available for you to select here. Now I'm going to go back to flags, and I'm going to choose Force Encryption. And again, as I'd mentioned before, this is not backwards compatible. It, does, it is not very friendly with legacy applications. So if you're going to use this recommendation, I, I suggest testing thoroughly in your environment just to make sure that it works. So once that's done, I'm going to click OK. And then it's going to ask me to restart the services for these changes to take effect. So I'm going to click OK. And now I'm going to go back up here to the SQL Services. Just right-click on the SQL Service and then choose Restart. So here I am once again on my management workstation, and uh, I'm just going to uh, run this command once more just to show you the changes on this certificate. So here you see now that when we run this command, we're getting a legitimate certificate that is issued by my enterprise issuing CA. It is an RSA certificate with a 2048-bit key, and importantly, this certificate is only valid for one year. So you do have to come back and do this exercise once a year, annually, uh, but this is an excellent way to protect your TLS communication. Next, let's see what this looks like when we connect with the SQL Server Management Studio. So I am going to connect to the SQL Server, and I'm going to choose Encryption as optional, and we'll choose Connect. And you'll see here it immediately rejects my connection because I am not using TLS. So we'll click OK, and we'll switch this to mandatory. What do you think will happen here? Let's see. Same thing. Again, mandatory is different than strict. So let's go back and set this to strict. And again, this is a feature of SQL Server 2022. And then we'll click Connect. And we're good. We have a connection to the database. So I've closed out the SQL Server Management Studio, and I'm going to connect once again, but this time I'm going to connect using the short name or the single label host name. And you'll see no certificate errors or warning there. And that's because we added the short name to the subject alternative name list on the TLS certificate. So that's an excellent idea. Just make sure that if somebody's connecting with the FQDN, great, but if they're still connecting with the single label host name, they can still connect. So that brings us to the end of the demonstration. If you have any questions at all, you can reach out to me by leaving me a comment below, or you can find me on various social media channels by visiting richardhicks.com connect.